Can we make a full Twitch overlay pack in one video? Basically today, I'm gonna be showing you how to make everything you need for a Twitch channel. We're gonna start with the Twitch page, everything you can customize, and then we'll go to the broadcasting software, all the elements that you'll need in order for your stream to look good. We're gonna stay consistent with the branding, so we're gonna pick a color scheme, a style, and we're gonna stick with it. Now, before you get scared, we're gonna be using photopia.com to do everything. It's free. It's basically Photoshop, but for free, and you can access it right now on your phone, your tablet, your computer. On top of that, I'm gonna be making whatever we make today available to you, also for free. So, whether you're trying to revamp your Twitch channel and you want to learn how to make everything or maybe you're an aspiring graphic designer who would like to get commissioned to do overlays for other people. Either way, you get multiple free templates and free education. But I gotta pay my bills somehow. So this video is actually sponsored by Owned. And maybe you know that Owned is your one-stop shop for everything you can customize as a Twitch streamer or YouTube streamer or even a, just a YouTuber. Owned has the biggest library for everything ever. Overlay packs, emotes, animated emotes, but they also allow you to create your own stuff if if you want to make emotes, you want to make badges, avatars, even gaming logos, but there's a brand new thing that they just came out with, which is the animated emote maker. And let me show you, you go here, you click on make your own animation. You can use emotes that you already have on Twitch. You can upload emotes from your computer. You can also transfer some emotes that you already created using owned. I'll use my Twitch emotes. I have to connect with Twitch, authorize. Now all my emotes from my Twitch channel will appear on the left here, and I can just pick which emote I want. Then from there, I'll see all the animations that are available. For example, this one I can click and when I hover it will show me the animations this one is like fire I guess that's a thumbs up that's party time we'll get a bonk that's a resident sleeper oh that one would be cool for like big donations we get an RIP we're getting <laughs> buried anyways I'm gonna let you check the rest out over at own.gg slash get level that's my special little link also own is always getting like cool promos and stuff like that so keep an eye out for that top bar right now you can get 50% with the code streaming on all products. So that's own3d.gg slash gal level. All right, let's determine everything that we need to make a full overlay pack. First of all, the Twitch channel. Customizing it, you will need a banner, a profile picture. We're basically gonna make a template with a hole in the middle so that people can put their avatars or their profile picture in there. Then we're gonna have panels, so we'll make one template and we're just gonna change the text. And then offline image or the video player banner image. So that's your Twitch channel itself. Now, when it comes to OBS Studio or whatever broadcasting software you're using, overlays, we're gonna have a starting soon overlay. We're gonna have a be right back overlay and then an intermission overlay where you basically have your camera at the forefront maybe a little bit of the gameplay top right or somewhere then we'll make a camera overlay in case you want a gameplay scene that includes the gameplay being full screen and then your camera is going to be in a corner somewhere now there are some elements that we might create between scenes such as a labels bar where you want to put recent follower recent subscriber recent cheerer for the branding we're going to go with black and white for the color scheme and for the style we're going to go with very sharp very rectangle but with some added little details maybe like tiny little squares to make it look more futuristic and more advanced. Are you ready? Let's do this. All right, photopia.com. That's step one. You open up your browser, you go to photopia.com, you click on new project. Top left, you're gonna see the dimensions. We're gonna go 1080p because that's what most uh, screens are. So 1920 by 1080. And for the DPI, we're gonna go 300. So it's nice and clean. Click create, boom, there you go. I like to start with the biggest thing in the, in the whole pack. And that is basically the base layer of like starting soon screen or offline image. Now this is the hardest part. When you're sitting here and you have a blank page, you should be looking at inspiration like on Google images and stuff like that. Or you should get an image in so that you get your creative juices flowing. I like going to pixhere.com. Those are public domain images basically. And look for some keywords like abstract. You might remember this little thing, which is part of an overlay pack that I made recently. Keeping in mind that the style is gonna be sharp, rectangles and all that. I actually like this image right there. We might not keep it, but let's just get started. Right click on it. I'm gonna click copy image. Go back to Photopia, control V, control alt T to transform and then just drag it. Nice, and this is basically our background. What we need on a starting soon screen is the text that says starting soon. Of course, we need, uh, we're gonna make a little space for the chat. We're gonna place it conveniently for our intermission screen too. And we need a labels bar. You can add a social media like line if you want, but it doesn't matter. So let's start by creating a bunch of rectangles because that's the principle of graphic design. Click on the rectangle tool, press U or press U, sorry. Fill, we want this to be either black or white. We're gonna go with black. 
and then we might add some accents in white later on. Now I know that my intermission screen is probably gonna look something a little bit like that. This is the spot for the camera. And then on the right side, we'll have logo or gameplay, and then here the chat will be, all right? So I can use this to basically have an idea of where I want my chat to stay on my intermission, my other screens, like the starting soon, the be right back and all that, just to make it easier on ourselves, really. So I can delete that one by dragging it to the bin. And I'll also delete that one to drag it to the bin. Just gonna keep my chat right there, right? Press V to have the move tool and let's drag it down. I actually have something called input history, so it should show you what I'm pressing. So if I ever forget to press something, just pay attention to this right there. So V for the move tool, and I'm gonna select my shape here. So every time you create like a new shape or whatever, it's gonna appear on the layers list. Just pay attention a little bit. We have our background, which was white. We can turn off the uh, black and white background, boom. There we go. And we kind of know that our um, labels bar is probably gonna go somewhere over there. I'll probably keep it within the realm of our, um, on top of the webcam on the intermission. That's not, a, that's not a huge concern right now. Or maybe I can make it its own like huge bar at the bottom. And in this case, I would want single label rectangles first, just like that. Now let's add the text just to add the text. <laughs> So we click on the T, right? Well, we click, yeah, we click on the T right there and then we click once, we'll let it load a little bit and then we type our text, starting, starting soon. I'm gonna click and drag to select and we're gonna find a font that we kinda like. Remember the style? All right, so this is the point where as long as you select your branding in your head, you should not struggle to make decisions, basically. We picked a style, which was a bunch of rectangles, so very sharp and stuff like that. So we're not gonna be using Comic Sans uh, to, <laughs> we're gonna be using common sense, not comic sense, a eh, bars when it comes to our font. So we're immediately, we know what we're looking for ish. We're looking for something bulky, something, I really wanna use this, but I already used it in another tutorial. So let's, let's look for something else, just very square. And this time I'm not downloading any new fonts. I want to use um, fonts that Photopia already has so that it's more accessible to you and it's easier to follow maybe. Okay, so there's this one called Metro. It has a lot of diagonal lines, but we'll see if that works. Size here, you can go hover over size and drag up. With the text tool selected, you can click away and then bring stuff here. I don't like the font, I don't like it. <laughs> okay, so we have this one called Millennia and that's what I'm gonna use. So let's bump up the size a little bit. Now, if you wanna control stuff like the text formatting, you can go to the right and find something called character. If you don't see it, you can go to Windows and then find character and it's gonna appear basically. This is where you can control your tracking, your leading and all of that. Basically this, the, the space between characters and between lines and all of that. You can also have paragraph if you want it to be like in the middle, for example. Boom, that is something that you have access to. We might actually use that. Yeah, I like that. Let's, let's put it in the middle. So I'm gonna go back to my move tool. I'm gonna press control A in order to select everything. And while my move tool is selected, basically I will have access to the align tools that are up top here. So I can center horizontally, vertically, horizontally, I guess, and then vertically. So now I know that my starting soon is in the middle of the screen, but we're probably gonna move it to give some more balance. I like having my text be white. So while the text is selected, you can go back to character and you'll see an image like a, a color rectangle, you can change that, click OK, boom, now it's... If we're really trying to push the style, we might create some rectangles. I'm gonna double click on the T near the text layer and I'm gonna try to play around with the leading a little bit so there's less, that's more compact, there we go. And if we wanna really play up with the style, you can double click on the name of your layers to name them because I'm starting to get confused already. So that's gonna be chat box and that's gonna be uh, labels, label one. Uh, what did I say? Yeah, I was gonna create. So press on the rectangle tool and just create a box where you think is enough. There's probably another way of doing this, but whatever. Nice. And let's create one for the starting soon. It doesn't matter if the G is out of bounds. Try to center it as much as you can. And if you can't, you know that you can center it horizontally by pressing control A again, selecting both of those, pressing V to get back to the move tool center, boom, now you know it's centered perfectly. Control D to deselect, and nice. We have like a black and white thing going on that I kind of like. Okay, now let's play around with the chat box a little bit more. Maybe I wanted to say chat box, right? Or just chat. I'm gonna press T to bring up the text tool. I'm gonna click once and I'm gonna type chat. I can type it, uh, you know, start with uppercase and then lowercase or all uppercase 
doesn't matter. Let's go chat. Now, basically most of your efforts are gonna be during your starting soon, like during the first piece of graphic. Everything else, you're basically gonna be copying it. So it's gonna go super fast once you're done. Oops, press Control T instead of Control Alt T. Control Alt T to transform. We're gonna bring that around here. Now in the layers list, we want the chat to be on top of the chat box so it's visible. And we want that to be way smaller. You can press Control Plus to zoom in and you can hold space in order to move around in that corner, maybe in that corner. I think that corner is fine. I'm going to create a white rectangle just to kind of separate um, what's going on here. Rectangle here. And I'm going to just click, drag, drop, double click on the, the icon next to the shape layer to change the color. Boom. And that's, you know, that's a little bit of decoration right there. You can click on it. As you can see, it's not fully in there. You can click on it and while you have the move tool selected with V, you can press the arrows on your keyboard to place it perfectly. Nice. Now control minus to zoom away. We're getting somewhere. It doesn't look like much, but we're getting somewhere. You can also hold alt and then scroll to zoom in and out. We're going to keep that design and we're going to add it to our label. For example, I'm going to go find my label. Boom. And I'm going to pick rectangle and I'm going to do the same thing. Just create a rectangle that goes on top of it. Double click on the icon. Make it white. Boom. Press move tool. Place it perfectly. You can you can transform it if you want to, but I'm gonna keep the little imperfections. Maybe it'll give it some character. You know, this is obviously like too high. Doesn't matter. Okay. Another thing I'm gonna do here is duplicate this one that I just made. I'm gonna make sure I'm on move tool. I'm gonna hold Alt, click and drag. I can hold Shift, I believe, to stay on the same line. So Alt and Shift. Alt to drag, shift to keep it in line, and I'm gonna drop it. Control Alt T to transform, and I'm gonna make this like a square-ish. As you can see, it's proportional, so I'm gonna hold shift to make it not proportional for once. And once it looks kind of like a square, you can let go. This is where we're gonna put some icons, so things like, you know, new follower, all of that is gonna be represented in an icon. Nice. I actually like the little imperfection, not gonna lie, but we're gonna be adding way more details to this. So don't worry, be happy. Now, this is the part where we start grouping stuff together because you know we have separate sections. So our label, that little shape on the right, you can call it little shape if you want to. Little bar, nice. And this is basically the background for the icon. So we're gonna call this one frame, okay? I'm gonna hold shift on my keyboard and then click down to label to select all three of those. And I'm gonna press control G. Now I have them in a folder and that folder is basically label one. <laughs> cool. Now I can hold alt on my keyboard, click drag. And with the move tool selected, I can move this. Boom. I created a copy. I can hold shift to keep it in line so it doesn't move. And I can create some sort of space in between it. Nice. We want three of those. Usually you can put more if you need, but whatever. Let's do that again. So hold alt drag up and we create another copy and we're going to kind of eyeball it so that it's kind of the same distance in between them. Doesn't matter too much. You can still use your arrows on your keyboard to move them. I believe that is the same distance. Maybe not. Boom. So now you have three labels. You can rename them. Remember, we're spending a lot of time on this so that we don't have to spend a lot of time on the rest. But now that we have a labels bar, we can put it on top if we want to. I kind of want it to be like a full, like a full screen thing, but I don't know if that's a good idea. We'll think about all that during uh, decoration. Uh, I want to go back to my chat box and I want to add some more quote unquote decoration. Let's go here. I'm going to pick my rectangle tool and we're going to create a rectangle at the bottom here. You can hold space while you're creating it to move it around. I want this to be kind of thin. Nice. Double click on the icon, make it white. There you go. Okay, not bad. Remember that we can replace that background when whenever we feel like it, really. Now, because of the chat box being so big on the right, we kind of have a balance problem. Left left side is empty and we're kind of running out of elements. <laughs> so what we're going to do is put our socials over there. Same thing, we're going to put three main socials. You can put more if you want to. Before that, I want to group everything that is with the chat box together. So we have that little shape over there. We have the chat text. We have the bottom shape and we have the main shape. So I'm going to hold shift, click on the top one, press control G, boom. And now they're all together. All right. So let me zoom in a little bit and let's create our social thingy thing. 
with the rectangle tool selected, you want to do something like this. There we go. Maybe you want it to be white this time, right? We're balancing black and white. We're playing around a little bit. I like it. It's going to be very visible, unfortunately, but uh, you don't have to keep it in every scene, to be fair. And in this case, I'm not going to separate the icon. I mean, I could, but I don't want it to look like the labels bar too much. So I'm going to just keep it like completely white. I'm going to hold Alt to duplicate, hold Shift to keep the axis. That. Do the same thing. Hold Alt to duplicate, hold Shift. Eyeball the distance. You can select them all in the layers list. And um, yeah, this is where you decide where to place them in order to kind of offset the chat. Now the chat is like bottom right. So maybe we want this. Oops. Wait, what? Oh, I activated auto select. You want to make sure if you're clicking on stuff and it's selecting different layers, as you can see over there, uh, you have auto select enabled. Let's go back to our shapes. There you go. And when it comes to the size of stuff, nothing needs to be huge to be completely fair. Um, one big sign of, you know, amateur graphic designers is when everything is huge. I keep pressing control T instead of control alt T. Control alt T. I maybe want this to be a little wider holding shift in order to make it stretch that. And maybe I want the whole thing to be a little tinier. Okay. So far, so good. Again, the background doesn't look like much. We're going to probably change that eventually. Of course, the more elements you can put, the better it kind of looks. <laughs> Like if you can have, if you had like an extra six, this would be perfect, right? If you had an extra three socials that you wanted to plug. But if you have a logo or if you have some sponsors or anything like that, this is where you want to put that. If you want to put a message, hey, make sure you follow the stream or whatever. Boom. But we don't have any of that. So we're going to stay like this. All right, let's go back to our labels. Uh, we can even group them all together. We're going to group the groups. Boom. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I would like to make sure that they are centered. So if I, if I press control A and I click center horizontally while they're selected, will they behave? They will. OK, cool. Now they're centered. <laughs> control D to deselect. Nice. Now the main text, we want to maybe group that together. So starting soon with the background and all that control G. We're going to call that main text and maybe you want to move that a little bit just to play around with the balance once again. I just kind of like it a little above the midpoint. All right, let's try not to overthink it and let's uh, add more details to finish it up. The labels, we want some icons in there and each label has their own group. So we're going to make sure we add our icons in the right group I'm going to click on Frame. Basically, when I click on something and then I create something else, I know that the next layer is going to be on top of it, right on top of it. So it's basically for placement. Control plus to zoom in. Is this like too big or too? As an affiliate, I like to put subs, cheers and donations. If you're not affiliate, you can put follow donation and then top donator and pick whatever icon you want for that. Let's start with cheer. You can download an image from Google of like a bit. So I type Twitch bit and Google images and boom, you have this one. Or you can go, you know, the painstaking way of creating it yourself. I'm going to make one just to just to flex on you. Uh, I'm going to create a rectangle. I'm going to press the pen tool, which I know I don't. I try not to make too many tutorials about it. I'm going to hold control in order to have access to the points and um, Oops. And we're going to we're just going to move stuff around until it looks like a bit uh, control alt T to transform. Actually holding shift while rotating to have better rotations like 15, 30, 60. Press enter control click, control click away, control click to make sure only one is selected and control click and drag holding shift. There we go. And there you go. Twitch bit icon. OK, get the move tool. Double click on the shape to change the color. We want this to be black and we're going to just move it in place. Control Alt T to transform. Hold Alt to maintain proportions just like that. OK, and for the second one, I'm going to do the same thing, uh, except I'm going to add maybe a star for subscribing and a dollar sign for donating. So I'm going to pick the second label star custom shape. So I click and held on on um, the shape layer thing and I'm going to click down there and I should have something that looks like a star or I can just find star. Boom star. This time I can just click and drag directly holding shift to maintain proportions to make it, you know, perfect releasing nice double click on the icon, make it black. Boom. We're good. And for the dollar sign, I wonder if they have custom shape for dollar sign. So click on the shape tool. Now that looks like that. Uh, money. I guess there's that dollar or you can just type uh, dollar sign with the text tool to be fair. That's what I mostly use. 
Boom, double click. Now I placed it in the wrong group. That's why it's not very visible. So I'm gonna open up that other group and just place it right there. Nice, so our labels bar is complete, pretty much. For the socials, um, we're gonna see if Photopea already has social icons. You click on custom shape, click the drop down here, and let's type something like Twitter. And it does. Fun fact, this is something that Photoshop doesn't have. You have to import your stuff. Maybe you have to save them and all that. But by default, Photoshop doesn't give you social media logos. In this case, I placed it wrong. We're going to go find our top shapes because that's what it is. We'll group them up together. The other one would be YouTube. You want to put like most important stuff for you. Holding shift to keep it proportional. Double click, make it black. And last one can be Instagram or Twitch. I don't know if they have Twitch. That would be great. Oh, they do. <laughs> They totally do, but it's your Twitch channel. So maybe you don't want the Twitch on your Twitch. Instagram will do. This is an outdated, <laughs> this is outdated. This is an outdated logo of Instagram, but we'll take it. We'll definitely take it. Photopia, if you're watching this, you gotta update this. This is one thing that I tell people when I'm doing stream review and they do their, their graphics. Wait, what happened here? Oh, it needs to be on top. There we go. I'm always like, you used the wrong Instagram logo. I just selected the move tool and then moved it around to make it kind of centered. There you go. Now, if you want, we can immediately add the text, right? You're going to put your ads, going to click once. Now, if you don't want to use the exact same text that you use for that main text, that's completely fine. You usually want something that is more readable. Let's see if this is readable. Photo. I'm going to double click on the T to select the text. We're going to open up our paragraph thing. We're going to make that black. Click OK. Size, you can click on the, the text and then drag down. Nice, click away and also drag. I think that's pretty cool. Paragraph, are we centered? Yes, we are. We're gonna keep it that way. That's pretty nice. That's pretty good. All right, click text again, YouTube. I'm gonna keep it lowercase just for the style, I guess. Also, so it differentiates from the main text. A level, move tool, text tool, and Instagram, I'm at Yes, all my social medias are not the same, which is a shame, but um, I've come to terms with it. Don't come for me. Nice. Let's group all of that together. Control G and that is social. All right. Actually, I want some more details in the chat to make it look more well thought of. Look at that. Look how look how I usually don't do this. I usually like don't even name my layers at all. But, you know, I'm showing a tutorial. I'm showing you the good practices. So uh, chat, we want that tiny little shape here. I want to duplicate it. I'm holding alt. I'm dragging down this time because I want it to be underneath it. I'm going to press control alt T. I'm going to drag, but I'm going to hold shift to stretch it. And I just want it to be right there. Nice. Press enter. And that one that was up top, I want that to be black now. Double click on the icon, make it black. Just more detail-ish, right? More detailed. And yeah, this is the part where we decorate a little bit more. We might we might add uh, some more random squares and all of that. But this is basically what's uh, the part that's going to cement our um, style. So I want to click above that background image and I'm going to create a bunch of rectangles because that's what graphic design is. Hold the shape tool until you see a rectangle. Let's do this. Someone's going to think I'm serious when I keep saying graphic design is just a bunch of rectangles. I'm kind of serious, though. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of serious. Just kind of. I'm going to place this like that. I like it. I'm going to duplicate it to put one underneath it. I'm going to double click on that new one. I'm going to make it white. So basically adding more black and white kind of every, everywhere to create some sort of balance, to, to create some sort of visual clogging to make this look more intricate than it really is. But we know the truth. You, you and I, we know the truth. We know, we know that this is just, oh, wow, he just put a bunch of rectangles everywhere. I'm going to select those two rectangles two rectangles. Yeah. I'm going to click, uh, I'm going to hold alt and drag them. And now I can just place them wherever I want. Of course the order changed. So you might have to switch, uh, which one is white, which one is black. I'm just going to put a little bit up there. Remember that we have a lot of, um, we have a lot of elements on the right side and not enough on the left side, whatever is showing here. We're actually going to just drag that top one, put it at the bottom and yeah, now we have white on black. I don't like it. Let's switch them up. Double click, uh, make the black white and make the white black. There you go. Really damn my baby, it doesn't matter if you're black or white. Sorry. Okay. Um, do I like that bottom right uh, left? Maybe not enough. Again, this is just visual clogging. I'm going to duplicate this and maybe put 
a little bit of it over there. Nice. I'm going to duplicate it again. I'm going to move the bottom part. I'm going to make sure this is up top so I can keep an eye. As you can see, we're creating a ton of layers. We can merge them if we want, but if you ever want to move one of them, it, it might be a pain. I'm going to control alt T on that one so that it's kind of symmetrical. Holding shift to stretch, press enter. Selecting the other one on top of it, control alt T. Holding alt for proportion, but I really want uh, stretching. So alt and shift to drag from the middle and also stretch. Now, is this really in the middle? No idea. Press enter, select the bottom one, control alt T again. Hold alt and shift to stretch. Make it proportional-ish. Nice. Uh, control A to select everything and then center horizontally. I forgot to select the other one. Doesn't matter, we can just select the other one now. Select horizontally, it's going in the middle anyways. Control D to deselect. Nice. Now we have a bunch of... This looks like the cover for Guitar Hero. It's just the black and white. That reminds me of it for some reason. Okay, nothing to do with Guitar Hero at all. All right. Cool, 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 cool. So that's all at the bottom. You can put this as random shapes. Control G to select them all and group them. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, random shapes. Nice. And then on top, so I'm going to click on whatever is all the way up top. I'm going to create a new layer by clicking at the bottom here. New layer. Boom. And I'm going to select uh, B for my brush. And we want a square brush because our style is square. Remember? Do you rem? Okay. So I have a little square here. Hardness is 100%, so it's not going to be feathered at all. And then I don't know if you can see the colors. Uh, at, can you see them? You can. Okay, cool. We have black for uh, foreground, white for background. You can click on that little arrow to switch them up. So now I have white. If not, you can just click on the color and then pick it. Okay. And now we're going to add even more square, but we're going to start with like kind of big square ish. And we are on a layer on top of everything. So you might have to do this for every time you change the text, especially if you're going to add a lot near the text. So keep that in mind. And this is how you trick people into thinking that your design is more elaborate than it really is. Random squares. You try to balance it a little bit. We're not adding a ton of the big ones, but still enough. I know that this part doesn't have much. So I'm going to add more here just to put some visuals. Again, adding random stuff. Don't be afraid to add some in the corners. In the, this is just like tiny details, so it doesn't matter. It's not important information. So you can put some outside of the frame a little bit. You can combine some together. Maybe you want a cluster, for example, right? You want one here, one over there, and one about there. Okay, that's nice. Let's right click and make a smaller square. 12 pixels is fine. Uh, maybe I want to zoom in a little bit. Now I really want to. Add some more random squares. All right, now we've created something that is visually like <laughs> it's visually clustered, but no one can say that this is not like complex. I'm going to get rid of the background now. I'm going to click on that background image and I'm going to press control I. And we can have like a better idea of what we created. It's more like 8-bit. I, I wasn't necessarily going for that, but I don't necessarily dislike it. I'm going to do a little technique and um, see if that works. I'm going to click on that top layer here. I'm going to Press control A. I don't I didn't need to click on the top layer. I'm going to press control shift C. And that's going to copy everything that's visible within that selection, right? And I'm going to press control V. Now, basically what it did is that it created like a merge image of everything that was visible. So I have on top of everything, I have the same thing, but it's all in one layer. Now I can go to filters, go to blur and let's go with Gaussian blur because that's usually easy on your computer. Let's bring that up a lot. 31 is fine, click OK. And let's drag this on top of our background. OK, that's basically giving us some sort of a glow effect. 
It's not necessarily what we're going for. I'm going to press V for the move tool. I'm going to move this around. Okay. I'm going to go on top of the layers list on opacity. I'm going to bring that down a little bit. And I basically want to create a pattern, right? So with the same layer selected, I'm going to hold alt and I'm going to duplicate it. For once, the sharp lines at the bottom here don't necessarily matter. And maybe you want them to intersect a little bit to create a nice effect. Duplicate again, holding Alt. Nice. Another thing you can do is Control Alt T, right click, and then flip horizontally. So that basically flips the image so that it doesn't look too much uh, the same. Hold Alt, move it around. Maybe we could stretch it. Control Alt T and hold, uh, <clears throat> hold Shift to stretch. Maybe that would look okay. Not too bad. Alt. I did not expect to make this. I'm not going to lie. Now, the fact that this is black and white, I want to try something else. Okay. Just that's just for my pleasure. I'm going to click on the top here. Control A to select everything. Control Shift C to copy everything that's visible. Control V. And I'm going to invert this, right? Because it's black and white. So if you want a white version of this, because the dominant color here is black, we could press Control I here. And this is what it would look like. This is not bad. <laughs> this is not bad, chat. Anyways, uh, let's delete this. But basically, if you wanted to, that's what you would have. All right. The question now is, do I still want an image as the background or am I satisfied with this? I definitely due to it because of all the details that I have here. I definitely want something that is blurry in the background. So let's go back to uh, pics here and maybe let's find something that is more reasonable as a background. Let's go back to our abstract and we definitely do not want any shape that is going to be too noticeable, but we're going to blur it out anyways. It doesn't matter that much. I like this. Yeah, I'm going to right click, copy image, go back to Photopea, control V. Oh, wait, actually, I'm going to click on the background. So let's put it. It puts it on top of it. Control V, control Alt T, bring this in the middle, maybe uh, hold Alt, drag up. This is <laughs> this looks good. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. This looks pretty good. I'm going to make it bigger just so I can center it a little bit better with the, with the text. Yo, what have I done? Look at that. Not bad, right? Uh, and I'm going to press Control Shift U on that background that we just placed to make it black and white. Control Shift Q. U. <laughs> not Hue. And let's blur it. Like, I, I, I don't want to blur it, but let's blur it. Let's blur it. Gaussian blur. And this time, maybe we want less. Nope, never mind. Okay, now we can lower the opacity to make it darker. And there you go. Pretty complex, but this is how you make a starting soon overlay. Now we're going to click on File and we're going to export as PNG. Click Save and save it somewhere in a folder, make a folder for this. Okay, another thing I'm gonna do is uh, save it as a PSD, just in case like Photopea crashes on me or something like that. Starting soon. And we're gonna go off from there. So from this, we're gonna create our offline image, we're gonna create our b right back screen, and even our intermission screen. All of the screen dimensions are exactly the same. So since this is the same kind of um, screen, we're gonna go ahead and make our b right back scene. I'm not gonna make an ending scene because I you don't need one really. You should just directly raid. But if you really want one, you can still make it. Just change the text, right? So we're going to go to our main text. Actually, you want to put all of that into background. <laughs> Let's put all those together and control G and background. Just kind of call it back. Main text, you see the text here. Double click on the T and you can call this one B, B, right? Or is the diagonal line coming in the B? I hate that. And then enter back. This is actually perfect. It fits, <laughs> it fits it perfectly. <laughs> That's really nice. We don't even have to change like the, the squares that much. I think uh, that's pretty nice. Now you can export this as a PNG. When I told you it was going to go faster, like that's what I mean. Boom, you have your right back scene now. Be right back, enter, nice. Uh, let's say offline image, for example. Currently, oops, I don't go full. Currently offline. Nice. Now we have the shapes in the background that just 
don't match so we want them to match so click on this and we're just going to stretch them Control alt t hold alt and shift to drag from the middle and to stretch boom Control alt t drag from the middle and stretch boom there you go now why would i have a chat in my <laughs> offline image great question you shouldn't it serves no purpose so we can turn it off uh, labels bar same thing so we have labels, boom. This is why we group them. Maybe you want the main text to be more centered. Uh, understandable. Grab that. Oh, now you are missing like a bunch of details on the right side. So I might duplicate this. Um, we're missing a lot of details on the right side now. I'm going to duplicate this, basically the layer with all the little details. And I'm just going to put some more here. I'm just going to drag it. Okay, so I'm going to hold alt, click drag. And just... as if nothing ever happened. And now we can export, export as PNG, save offline. Nice, now how do we make the intermission screen? We're not gonna use the main text, so we're gonna turn that off. We're gonna bring the chat back. Uh, we're gonna turn off that extra layer that we put on the chat. We're probably gonna have to move the social bar somewhere. Here's not bad, and we're gonna create a Rectangle for our main frame, basically. Make sure no one hacks into that main frame. Wow. 1990s hacker movie joke. Okay, let's uh, just drag it up like that. Now, if you really want to use this as a gameplay scene, meaning your gameplay is going to be on that main scene, you want it to be the correct aspect ratio. So basically what you would do, let me control Z real quick. You would click once and then type 1080p, basically, right? Press OK. And now from there, you would just transform, but without stretching. Control Alt T to transform, of course. And as you can see, it's not stretching it. It's maintaining the proportion without clicking anything. And now you would place it in a way for it to be like that. Right? And now, basically, you can put your gameplay and it will fit perfectly. Now, here's the thing. I don't want to, I don't make intermission screens for a gameplay. I try to avoid them. But if that floats your boat, do your thingy thing. You want to try to keep the margin left and right the same just so that everything feels balanced. That's nice. Now, obviously, you want this to be on top of all the details. <laughs> Although it doesn't matter because you should probably cut a hole in it so that you can easily put your camera or gameplay. We're going to add an additional screen top right. So that is if you're using your camera as your main thing in the main rectangle, you can put your gameplay there. Like if you're in the lobby, right? So that people know, oh, he's in the lobby. That's why he's showing his face right now. It's not currently in game. Or you can put your gameplay in the middle here and then this will be for the camera. If you want to use this as a game screen, I advise against it, but whatever. The problem here with this is that you have some space here. If you want to put some text, we can go back and just duplicate this text or just move this text to make it say intermission, right? I type this in lowercase if I select all of that and I actually want this to be uppercase. I think there is this. Okay, this button here under character will make it uppercase. You can play around with the size. Nice. A little bit cluttered, to be fair. A lot of details. This is not the best graphic design, but it's a style that I never did before and I wanted to do it. There we go. Boom. Um, how would we cut those holes? I'm going to go ahead and click on that little lock on our background here. Okay. Select the background, select everything that's visible, hold shift, right? I'm gonna group them. Okay, everything is together, right? Let's go back in here and we're gonna select just the shape of where we wanna cut out. So I'm gonna press control and then click on the icon next to the actual layer. I'm gonna press control shift now. So control to add a selection and then shift to add to the selection. Boom. Okay, now I have both selected. Can collapse this. I'm gonna go bottom and I'm gonna add a layer mask. I did the opposite of what I want, so I'm gonna press Control I to invert that mask. And that's how you make an intermission screen. Easy clap. Look how fast we're moving. <laughs> we have so many files already. That's your intermission. Okay, cool. Remember that webcam overlay we talked about? This one, it can be any size you want really but we can click file new um 
let's let's go with 1080 just so that we can have an idea it's going to be small if gameplay is full screen it's probably going to be somewhere like this in a corner right now this is where you select the format if you want it to be square if you want it to be uh 16 by 9 aspect ratio if you want it to be long whatever i'm going to make it a little elongated not totally a square and let's say it's going to be this size nice i'm going to create an i'm just going to duplicate this Control alt t and I'm going to stretch a little bit of it. I might want to have this go up like that. So I'm using shift and alt and all that to stretch or to drag from the middle like that. That's nice. If you want to put your name down there, maybe. OK, cool. I created another one. I'm going to control and click on the icon. I'm going to click on the bottom one. I'm going to turn that off. And I'm going to create a mask. Same thing that we just did, basically. Invert the mask. But now we have something with a transparent background, basically, right? Nice. Now, if you want to add some details and all of that stuff, you want to, you know, spend a little bit of time. Let me invert that. I'm going to make the background gray just so that we can see what we're doing. I'm going to press Control L. And don't worry about that part. You don't have to do that part. But basically, I want to go back and add some of the details that I had before with my brush. Whoops, forgot to create a new layer, new layer. Let me turn that off. And you want to put, oh my God, on top of everything. <laughs> there you go. And you want to place maybe a couple of squares, mostly on the outside to make it look like it's more intricate than it than it really is the whole point of graphic design is making you think that you're a good graphic designer when you're not nice let's go with three pixels this could be it this fits the style this could be it but we're gonna go back to our starting soon you can see our tabs here are different um maybe i want to turn off i can i can right click on the mask disable it and i'm also going to turn off those shapes the main text i'm gonna press Control a Control shift c to basically copy everything that i see bars uh <laughs> Control v it's like oh you just copy pasted this thing yes i did now with my frame selected i want to put this right on top of it i'm gonna hold alt and then click on it and it's basically gonna apply to the bottom one it's gonna only show on the pixels that are visible on that frame that we created Hold Alt, click once, boom, you see that little arrow? That means that it's only showing here. Now I can move it around. Press V, move tool. And as you can see, it's appearing there, right? I can also transform it, Control Alt T. Uh, in this case, I kind of want to keep it proportional. We have a bunch of squares in there. And uh, there you go. That's how you create like a fake, super detailed webcam, but no one's gonna, <laughs> you don't want this to say chat, obviously. But if you were to, you know, strategically place it, it can look pretty cool. Yeah, I like it like that. I like it like, I like it like that. Turn off the background. Uh, actually, no, keep the background for now. Go to crop tool or press C. Drag, make sure you don't cut out anything. Drag, nice. Drag, drag, press enter. Now turn off the background. I accidentally turned that off. There you go. And then save. File. Export as PNG. Save. Camera overlay. Enter. Save. I'm also going to save this as a PSD. I should probably save this as my intermission screen. So right click on that mask. Enable. Nice. Turn that off. Uh, no, the text. There you go. That's intermission. OK, for things like your banner, you just need like the size, right? You need to, to know what the size is. In my case, I just try to remember what my previous banner was. I figure it out once and then I just go off of that. So click file new and let's go 1920 by 480. Click create. And um, we're not going to do a lot of effort. Press control V. Remember that? Remember that part? This is V to have the move tool. And if you want to feature, like, if you really want to feature, like, your socials and stuff like that, you can uh, turn it off on your main 
overlay here and copy just the background and then just add specific elements. In my case, I just want the main squares. So I'm going to zoom out, control alt T. Actually, I'm, you know what? No, 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 no. I'm going to turn that off. Go back to intermission and right click, disable raster mask. We're going to disable the chat. We're going to add back that extra layer. Okay. Disable main text. Okay. Disable social. That's our background. Actually, I should probably save this too. This is just as background. Export as PNG background. Nice. Okay. Control, wait, control A, control shift C, go to the banner, control V, control T, just to keep an eye on where you really want it to be and stuff like that. And middle is fine. Middle is pretty fine. Press enter. And now again, if you just want to add like just the socials, you can go there. I'm going to do this and I'm going to basically select everything that is within this i also see that um i accidentally added a square on top of my social here i can go and delete that um by finding the eraser tool just like that there we go anyways so social what are the shapes this 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 so shape five shape 10 i'm holding control to select them i sh i didn't i don't have to do that um okay so what are the shapes we have shape five place is better Shape five, 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 and I'm going to click on their icons. I'm going to click on their icons, holding control to have actually a selection. Control shift on the next ones to add to the selection. And now I have this basically. They're all selected. Control shift C. And this is pixels now. If you mess up and you want to change the text on your banner now, you can't. Like this is baked in. Control V. You don't have to use this technique, but if you use it, just know. Just know. V move it. If you're using like a template for your banner, it will show you where you know your text is gonna show up and all that good stuff. But let's play it, place it roughly here, and let's just pray that hey, you know what? That's gonna be visible. Whatever. Uh <laughs> export as PNG, that's gonna be your banner. Banner, okay. We can save as PSD if you want to. I usually don't even bother for this, but I'm going to giving I'm going to be giving that to you. So you might want that. Uh, what else? Profile picture new. This is going to be a square. You can make this 900 by 900. It doesn't have to be that big, but boom, go back to our intermission, turn off social control A, select everything, control shift C to copy everything that's visible. Control V nice control alt T to transform, place it wherever you want. You can scale it down. I'm holding alt to drag from the middle and in here you can put a shape that you want. I could go for square pick rectangle here. I should go for square. That would be the best answer, but um, it's going to be. I cannot speak. I cannot speak here. I should go for square, but it's going to be circular anyways. So if you want to have an idea of how circular is going to be, you usually go to the corner from corner to corner. Or hold shift to make a perfect thing here. And this is what's going to be visible. So from there, I can pick a shape that maybe I like uh, five side polygon. Let's go with six side, press enter. And maybe I want this right like that. Holding space to move while I'm creating, put it roughly in the middle. Nice. So that's the shape that I want. Press control A V for the move tool. Make sure you center it horizontally and vertically. You can turn off the circle. You don't need it anymore. You can press control, click on that icon. Click on um, the background that you added, add a mask, control I to invert the mask, turn off the background. You don't need it. Turn off that shape. You don't need it. Oop. There you go. And now someone can put their face here, right? And they're going to have like a cool little frame that matches everything. I want to go a little bit deeper. Actually, I want to add that frame again. I want to add some white. I'm going to offset it a little bit by using my keyboard arrows and now I'm going to drag that underneath it. I'm going to hold alt on the mask, drag, drop it. Boom. Actually, I should have put it on top. There you go on top. <laughs> there you go. So now you can't really see it, but that's what it's going to look like. There's going to be a little bit of a shift there. I can do that again. Hold alt, drag it down. I'm using my keyboard to create some sort of shift. 
it's not really visible because the mask is moving with it. But I'm going to Alt drag and drop the mask from this layer, which is the correct one. And I'm going to put it here. It doesn't make sense. It's not symmetrical. It doesn't matter. Turn off the background and save that. Export as PNG. Save avatar. Nice, 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 nice. Uh, what else is left? The panels. Should I save this? Yeah, let me save this. The panels. OK, so for the panels, usually Twitch will resize everything to 320. When it comes to the width, when it comes to the height, you can put whatever you want. But I like doubling stuff just to make sure there's like a better pixel density. So I go 640 instead of 320. Right. And I also go 640 for the height and then I'll just decide on the length uh, on the height later on. We can put the background black directly here. Do we'll be doing ourselves a service and um, hopefully we still have the background copied. Control V. Yes, we do. Nice. Um, hopefully we have the same font selected. Yes, we do. So here you can type what I like to do is type my biggest word. My biggest word is usually Instagram or subscribe. I'm going to select it and I actually want it to be white. It's not letting me select it for some reason. Let me just double click on the text. And hoping that it, it is selected, even though it's not showing it to me. Click on the color, boom, make it white. I'm getting a little tired. I don't know if you can tell. But yeah, the reason why I put the biggest word is because when I do this. Later on, we're going to modify the background a little bit more. Everything else is going to fit. I know everything like about is going to fit. Artwork is going to fit rules, subscribe. Um, schedule everything. Now we have a lot of white. The text is going to be white. We're going to find a way to separate this, but don't worry about it. Let's look on our background here and control alt T since it's significantly. Bigger. We want we want that scaling. That scaling is pretty important. And let's drag this up. And if we can find a spot that doesn't have I can still show that little detail, but without too many in the middle, it would be perfect. Kind of like that. That's nice. We're going to keep it um, rectangle. I'm going to press V for the move tool. No, C for the crop tool. And I'm going to decide on the height of my panel now. And considering the font is pretty wide, I think a pretty slim panel would be cool. Boom. If you want to go overboard, you can add like an extra rectangle. There's my ship here and let's just add it. Bloop. Is that white? Nope. There we go. It's not. I didn't even add it in the frame. Press move tool. Let's bring it in. There you go. Nice. Click on Instagram, go to paragraph, make sure it's centered. It is centered. And what I do is I use my other overlays to have a, like a list of panels that I want. You can right click here. And I can see all the panels that I usually use. We put them on my other screen, but basically, you know, uh, Discord about uh, artwork, a blank one. If people want to customize them, commands, donate, Facebook, Instagram, merch, music. But you only put the ones that you need. So we're just going to I'm going to put about and then you do whatever you want. Nice. Uh, I'm going to format it so that it even if it even if it goes over the wide part, it does. It's, it's not going to be confusing. But before that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to control A. I'm going to center it on that line. There we go. Vertically, vertically. With the text selected, I'm going to go down to effects here, layer style, if you will. And I'm going to add a stroke. Nice. This stroke will be. It should be gray. It should be gray, but we're going to put it black to make sure. Or we can just color pick some of the gray around here. Not completely black so that we don't break the illusion completely. And I think the thickness is the thickness. And I think the thickness should be at two. I like it. All right. Click OK. Boom. There you go. You have your panel. You can export it. I'm gonna, this is my least favorite part is the whole panels part. Click save. I can create a new folder for panels. And we're going to call this one about I'm also going to save it as a PSD. So if you're getting this file, all you have to do is come here, double click on the text and type whatever you want and then export. PSD and this is panels. Nice. Oh, 
Oh my God. Uh, what else is ne- uh, is new? What else is needed? Did I center it uh, horizontally? I did not. It doesn't matter. You'll have to do that. Control D to deselect. Did we do everything? I don't think we did. Did we? Offline image starting soon. Be right back. Intermission. Camera overlay. Avatar. Background. Banner. Panels. Uh, that's it. <laughs> that's it. We pretty much did everything. Uh, of course, if you want to go advanced, if we were making like an animated overlay, then it would be, I would put something like transitions in there. I would put alerts, but um, to be fair, you can use those panels to make, to make alerts, right? You just type follow. Boom, export that, put it in stream elements. That shows up. The name of the follower shows up underneath it. Boom, you have followers, right? Artwork, if you're going to use this, make it link to my Gumroad page, gumroad.com slash get level. Yeah, I just got to figure out how to make... One thing that I noticed about Photopia, which is pronounced Photop, I think, but I like calling it Photopia. It, I don't know. It sounds better. There's PSD templates. I'm going to find a way to post it here. You see here, it says add your own templates. I'm going to find a way to do that. I'm going to publish them and I'm going to tell you how to find them. Wait, it's telling me how. Okay, so I need to publish every single one of those first and then I can um, post them as templates. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to upload all of those in the base, like the store, I guess. And all you have to do is go to photopia.com, pick PSD templates, and then type my name in the search bar, right? Or just type Twitch or whatever keyword. I'm also going to post individual links in the description for the PSD, like so that you can directly have access to them, right? I'm also going to post a link to an imager where you can download like the images. I'm going to get rid of my name here in the socials, for example. Boom, you can download this and then just add your own text here and boom, you have a starting soon screen. All right, I'm gonna do all of that, but we made it. We made it, we made a full overlay pack. I feel like I'm missing something and I can't remember what it is, but it it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. How long have I been recording for? Almost two hours, oh my God, all right. So with this knowledge, you can either make your own stuff or you can even get commissioned, even though I know I only showed you one single style. Watch my other videos on how to make overlays. You'll learn about other styles, but this is the basic of, hey, you want a full revamp. What files do you need? Those. For the people getting the images, it's not going to be a full overlay pack. As you can see, I did not make all of the possible panels, so you will have to go with the templates in Photopia and create your own panels. If this was kind of hard to follow because I was going too fast or you really don't know how to use any of that type of stuff, do not worry. I'm currently working on, I shouldn't announce it, but I'm working on a course for basic graphic design. The point of the course is to teach you everything that you need to know in order to be up and running when it comes to creating graphic design, especially simple graphic design, such as Twitch overlays. I don't know if you're making pamphlets, if you're making uh, credit cards, credit cards, I mean business cards and stuff like that. Like that so the whole point of my course will be to get you up and running and making money with graphic design or just learning enough to make stuff for yourself whatever your goal is either way i'm very tired and very hungry i'm gonna go grab a bite and i thank you so much for watching if you are looking for some dope overlays that are already pre-made and easy to install check out gumroad.com get level i have my 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 own overlays basically that are over there. Yes, you can use them for your stream. Go check them out. Most of them are free. The rest is very affordable. Again, thank you for watching. See you guys later. Get level, out.